Welcome to Lessons from the Playroom. In this podcast, Lisa Dion will help you explore the little things that make a big difference in play therapy. Lisa is the founder and CEO of the Play Therapy Institute of Colorado and the creator of Synergetic Play Therapy. You know, sometimes therapists get all caught up trying to study big theories and mastering techniques to help children like me. But sometimes it's the little things we show you along the way that make the biggest difference. Join Lisa as she teaches you some of the little lessons that children are trying to communicate to you so that you can help us in the best ways possible. And on behalf of all the kids you work with, thanks for listening and believing in us. Let's get started. Welcome to the New Year, podcast listeners. Can you believe it? It is 2020. My goodness, here we are kicking off a new year and a brand new decade. So over here at the Synergetic Play Therapy Institute, we have been working really hard the last couple weeks and really the last month to just make sure that we're heading into 2020 with our feet underneath us because we have so much going on and so much that is going to get rolled out. Our leadership team actually met for two days and we just did an awesome deep dive with each other, supporting each other and connecting and mapping things out and planning and looking at, you know, what what is working, what isn't working, what's our vision. It was just super inspiring. And so with that, I want to invite you to come hang out with us in person this year. So many of you tune in and listen from different places all over the world, and maybe you don't know that we are also all over the world sometimes, maybe even in your area, maybe you don't even know it. So I want to invite you to check out the events page at synergeticplaytherapy.com to find out if we're going to be near you and maybe come hang and say hello we have now crossed the, we are in 114 countries, this this podcast series, and it just keeps growing, and it's just super exciting. I know I always say that in these episodes, but it is. It's just super inspiring and exciting to see and hear about the play therapy um, community coming together worldwide. So just a couple things um, before we jump into the topic for this particular episode. On January 21st, a couple weeks, if you have been curious about Synergetic Play Therapy, if you are interested in jumping in, our next um, six-month online course starts January 21st. It is an awesome way to jump in and get um, just an experience of what I sometimes allude to and reference throughout the different podcast uh, episodes. So put that on your radar. Also, we'll be heading to Australia and the Philippines and Singapore in February. So if you are one of our international listeners and nearby, come hang, come check us out. There's events where where I could actually hug you in person, which would so make my day if I could do that. All right, so let's dive into the first topic of 2020 and of the decade, and it's a little bit of an extension of how we ended 2019. I got lots of feedback about the last episode, and it inspired me just to keep this conversation going a little bit and keep talking about one of the things for me that I feel is just it's just a, a cornerstone to what we do, and we just don't talk about it enough in our field. So what am I getting at? I'm talking about presence in the playroom. And presence in the playroom isn't just showing up physically and hanging with your kiddo for 45 minutes and then showing up for your next session and hanging with your kiddo for 45 minutes. I want to talk a little bit about presence, deep presence, and why is discussing it so important and so relevant 
to our work, not only in the playroom, but as clinicians and just as beings on this planet. So there are many different ways to talk about presence. People have their own experience of what presence is, what it means to be present. A really simple way to conceptualize and to feel it, because it really is a felt sense experience, it's really a sense of connectedness. And it's a sense of connectedness within our own bodies first. And I stress first because sometimes when we try to be present, we focus outside of ourselves. And so we ha- we are able to sort of be with other, but we're not actually really present because we're not with ourselves. And so to me, when we're also just as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm really looking at my understanding of how the brain and neuroscience works too, is that to be with other requires me to be present within myself first. I must be in connection or relationship with the different sensations in my body, with my, um, my internal world, if you will. I must be willing to sit and be with the different aspects of myself. Now, that is so much easier said than done. Many people find that it's easier to be present when it's quiet, when they can maybe meditate or put on some nice relaxing music. And yes, that can be a great environment to begin to cultivate presence, which involves the ability to look within or to be able to observe what's happening inside. However, as clinicians, when we're in the playroom, we're not going to sit there meditating while the child is doing what they are doing. We need to somehow be present in action. We need to learn how to cultivate a sense of presence in chaos, in a variety of experiences and emotions. And when we're talking about the landscape of therapy, we're really talking about how do I learn how to be present or cultivate a sense of connection with myself so that I can then be present with other in the midst of the challenging stuff, in the midst of the of the hard stuff coming up. Because as we know, that's what the kiddo And the families are working on. They're not coming to therapy to typically work on things that are going well. They're focusing on the hard stuff. Another understanding of presence really has to do with what I call dual attention or dual awareness. I talk a bit about this in my book, uh, Aggression and Play Therapy, when I talk about what it takes to become an external regulator. And I talk about this Um, ability that we have within ourselves to be aware of multiple things really um, happening simultaneously. So can I be aware of myself and other simultaneously? Can I track my own experience and the child's play simultaneously? Can I be aware of the child and the child's nonverbal cues and their play simultaneously? Can I be aware of the room and the environment in which we are both sitting while also being aware of what's happening on the emotional level simultaneously? When we are deeply present or connected or grounded, so in synergetic play therapy, we talk about this as attached to self, we talk about this as accessing the, the ventral state of our nervous system. We talk about this as a requirement for becoming the child's external regulator ultimately. But this, this cultivation of being able to be with and to be aware of is really, I think, um, uh, the beginning of being able to conceptualize presence. And again, there's people talk about it in many different ways. There's, there's different ways of, um, of wrapping our minds around it, but we'll go with that for, for this particular conversation.
I'm already alluding a little bit to why this is so important as a play therapist, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper here. One of the things that I stress so much in my teachings, and I know I've said this throughout this whole podcast series, and it's just for me, I think one of the pieces that I love so much about synergetic play therapy is that there really is an emphasis on cultivating the inner world of the clinician. So it's not just about technique. It's not just about understanding what's going on for the child or how to facilitate a process when the child is experiencing X, Y, and Z. But it goes a little bit deeper to really understand that um, it's really ultimately the, the presence and the ability for the clinician to have a relationship with themselves and the child that makes all the difference in the world. You know, you can take two play therapists who've done a very similar training and let's say, I'm just going to make something up here. Let's say they both took a, a workshop on a particular art therapy um, technique or something. And so they're essentially going in and doing the same protocol with the client. The difference between the two is not the protocol. And please hear that. It's not the protocol that heals in the playroom. It is the relationship. But then we have to go, but what what's, what are the variables in the relationship? And one of the most important ones is the ability for the therapist to be deeply present. Now, I want to be really clear about this because sometimes I hear um, play therapists really misunderstand this and think about, okay, so it's about me showing up and um, holding space and um, and really just um, completely focusing on the child, almost as if the therapist is not participating in that dyad in some way. And sometimes it even gets misinterpreted to, and presence is about kindness and niceties. And that's not presence. It can be an aspect of presence, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. Presence is really about the therapist a play therapist's ability to be with whatever is happening. So frustration, overwhelm, sadness, anxiety, and also kindness and sensitivity and all of that, all of that is part of, of um, developing and cultivating presence. So when we talk about it in the playroom, the therapist can only allow the child to go in their um, emotional world or the depth in their emotional world to the degree that the therapist can touch in on that part within themselves. And you've probably heard that before that, you know, we have to, you can't take a client where you haven't gone. That's another way, way of saying it. And I just can't tell you how true that is because as the, ther- the child begins to work with challenging emotions and material in the session, um, if there isn't a range or that isn't in the clinician's range and the clinician hasn't learned how to be present with it, not want to change it, fix it, stop it, back away from it, um, overemphasize that, like that that's better than another thing that's coming into the room, then what ends up happening is that this is where the therapist's own um, protective patterns and defense patterns come in. This is where the therapist will start to do something to try to shift what's happening in the playroom because the therapist is really uncomfortable. The therapist isn't able to be with whatever is, is going on. So I really believe that play therapy training and to really be an extraordinary play therapist really requires this beautiful synthesis of being able to understand theory and have so many tools in our toolbox, Um, know all kinds of different potential interventions. That's why I emphasize in an earlier podcast, study all the theories, study the modalities, read, read, learn, attend as many conferences as possible. Um, Don't get stuck in one way of thinking or one way of being in the playroom. So that's all that left brain stuff. But then we also have to cultivate presence. 
We have to learn how to sit with. We have to learn how to breathe into. We have to learn how to not analyze um, what's happening in, in our own inner world and just learn to let go and allow and allow an unfolding to happen within ourselves so that ultimately we can extend that out to the child and allow for an unfolding to happen within the child. Because remember, as the child is playing, their own protective patterns are coming into the playroom. The, and the protective patterns are there because something scary happened for the child. So if we're not able to be present and we're not able to, um, I haven't used the word mindful yet, but I'll bring that in, to be mindfully connected to what is, whatever that is in the room, we might actually be reinforcing their protective patterns. We might actually be giving them the message, yeah, don't go there. That's scary. Yep, let's change the subject. Yep, let's work on something else. Yep, let me ask you a question so that we get out of that felt sense because, because it's too much. So I think that's just really critical that we spend time looking at how present are we? Are we off in our head? Are we analyzing the whole time? Are we one step ahead of the child? As the child's playing, are we sitting there trying really hard to just make sense of what they're doing and trying to understand the play and put the storyline together? And and are we caught in our head around like, oh, and you know, how am I gonna translate this to the parents? And what do the parents even think about me? And I mean, are we are we caught? And do we have the ability to just pause and just to notice? Oh my gosh, I'm caught in my head. Okay, let me take a breath and just come back to this moment. Let me look at and feel into what's happening in this moment that is wanting me to go off into story. What don't I want to feel right now? It's so huge. Presence isn't just about showing up, play therapists. Presence is about participating with the fullness of you. I'm going to say that again. Presence isn't just about showing up. And I mean like just being there with the child physically. And it's not about um, having certain parts of yourself show up and then block out other parts because, you know, you were taught that only certain parts of yourself are allowed in the playroom. That's not presence. Presence is about participating with the fullness of you. Children need to feel the therapist. I talk about this at length in the book, and I mentioned the book earlier, Aggression and Play Therapy. We go into this so much in the training of um, synergetic play therapy, but I'll say this even beyond the playroom for you parents out there, for you teachers that might be listening. When a child cannot feel, energetically feel the, the adult, which means the adult is not present. They're caught in their head. They're off in la-la land. They're concerned about right or wrong. They're blocking their authenticity. They're functioning from, I should do this, I shouldn't do that. Um, the child will escalate the play. And the reason why the child will escalate the play is because the child needs the clinician to show up or the adult to show up, the parent, the teacher, the child needs to feel the adult in order for them to get a felt sense of where they are in the moment. Presence is also required for co-regulation. I cannot help the child regulate if I cannot regulate myself first. Let's say that again. I cannot help the child regulate unless I can regulate myself first. Synergetic play therapy, one of the biggest misunderstandings is around the use of the self. And really, I'm going I'm to break this down to you in a really simple way. The reason why we bring the self or we consider the self in the therapeutic dyad is because without it, you cannot engage in co-regulation. The analogy I'll use, the parent cannot attune well to the newborn child or to the infant or to the baby or whatever. The, the parent cannot attune well unless they are actively participating in the dance. 
They must attune to themselves first. They must learn how to participate fully within themselves so that they know how to read their own cues and their own activation, which then allows them to more accurately read the cues that are going on in the child. It also allows them to feel the more subtle emotions that aren't just apparent on the surface. It allows to go a little bit deeper to know when to take a breath, when to push in the play, when to back off, when it is important to name what's going on out loud, when it's important for the therapist to name whatever their experience is. This entire dance of attunement is not possible without the cultivation of presence. I think the biggest piece here that I, I hope you're hearing me saying, I'm going to say it again. It's about participating with the fullness of you. It's about learning how to be with yourself so that you can model to the child that it's okay for the child to be with all parts of themselves. And on a really fundamental level, it is a requirement for feeling fulfilled. It's going to be really hard, play therapist, for you to feel fulfilled in your life when you are disconnected from yourself, when you cut off parts of yourself because you think some parts of yourself are bad, because you think some parts of yourself are not worthy, when you disconnect because you don't want to feel certain pain, when you get caught in your own protective patterns and strategies and you don't allow yourself just to be with it, to feel the stuckness, to feel the tension, to feel the anxiety, and also to feel the joy and to feel the excitement or whatever it is. We cannot feel deeply fulfilled until we're able to fully be with ourselves in any given moment. So take a breath wherever you are listening to this. Be present with me. And more specifically, be present with yourself since I just shared, you can't be present with me until you're present with yourself anyway. So for just a couple seconds here, just notice. Notice your body. Notice the sensations happening inside of you. Notice if you want to run from them. Notice if you want to shut them out. Notice if you can just be with them, allow them. Don't try to change, fix. Because play therapist, here's the truth. Nothing's wrong with you. They're just sensations. It's information. More importantly, everything you're feeling right now in this moment is an indicator that you're alive. You are alive. You're here. You're on the planet. You're breathing. You're in motion. How extraordinary. Your anxiety, it's a reminder of your aliveness. Your sadness, it's a reminder of your aliveness. Breathe. Be present with yourself. Be present with the world around you. Allow yourself to feel the discomfort that comes up in you in the playroom. Allow yourself to notice it. As you do, you will impact your clients at greater and greater levels because they will feel you at greater and greater levels. You will actually register as more and more safe for your child clients. So as we continue to move into 2020, that is my invitation for you for this year, to be. Just be a little bit more. Be present just a little bit more. A few more conscious breaths a day a little bit more space to allow yourself to be who you are, to allow your experience to emerge. Allow yourself to feel just a little bit more in the playroom. Until next time, take care of yourselves. You are indeed the most important toys in that playroom. <laughs>